We're living in strange times right now. The world isn't really paying attention to the machinations of tech companies, and perhaps buying a new smartphone right now isn't top of mind. Nevertheless, today sees the launch of the Huawei P40 Pro. It's the most impressive piece of Android hardware we've seen this year so far, and the first true flagship from the embattled Chinese company that tries to make a real go at Google independence. If last year's Mate 30 series was a trial run, then the P40 series is the main event. And Huawei's message over the past few months has been explicit. They're relying on their own technology and they're building their own ecosystem. The P40 Pro, first and foremost, is all about the camera, as evidenced by the giant camera module on the back. But unlike the Mate 30 Pro, its design and feature set doesn't try and skip ahead a few years into the future. Instead of a giant footprint, a waterfall display with no volume buttons, and a massive notch housing 3D face unlock, the P40 Pro looks a lot like its predecessor. The 6.58 inch OLED display curves but not too much, and the volume buttons are present and satisfyingly clicky. The one minor downgrade in my opinion is the move to a left oriented hole punch display with two giant camera sensors staring back at you. It's anything but subtle, and breaks up the symmetry of what would have otherwise been a nearly bezel-less design. Still, the display is gorgeous, and at 2640 by 1200 pixels is the highest resolution we've seen on AP series to date. Plus, it goes up to a 90Hz refresh rate, which is a necessary spec for any 2020 smartphone. And while the camera modules make the phone feel a bit chunky, it's both shorter and narrower than a Galaxy S20+, Plus, making it much more usable in one hand. The phone's overall design and layout is otherwise mostly unchanged from that of the P30 Pro. No headphone jack, USB-C port on the bottom, along with a single down-firing speaker and an earpiece that's actually sound created by electromagnetic vibrations coming through the front glass. Huawei claims the in-display fingerprint sensor is upgraded and some 30% faster. I haven't noticed much improvement, but then the P30 sensor was already pretty great. The perimeter is covered with glossy polished aluminium that fits in with a glossy blue paint job on my review model. There are some other finishes available for this phone, including matte textures. On the inside, things are largely unchanged from the Mate 30 Pro. A Kirin 990 SoC that supports 5G in Europe, plus 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 3 storage. However, Huawei hasn't increased the size of the battery from the P30 Pro. It's still 4200 mAh, which doesn't look great on paper compared to the Galaxy S20 series, but it should be fine in practice considering how brilliantly the company's phones tend to perform. Also, unlike the Galaxy S20 series, Huawei has resisted the urge to slap in as much RAM as possible in this phone. There's no option to upgrade to 12 gigs on any of the variants here, so you need to make do with 8. Huawei's made some important improvements to the fundamentals of the P40 Pro's cameras. It stuck with the RYYB array, that's red, yellow, yellow, blue, that differentiated the P30's optics from the rest of the industries. But this year, it's increased the primary sensor size by nearly 40%. Yes, with the P40 Pro's 50 megapixel primary sensor at a size of 1 over 1.28 inches, we're approaching the day where smartphones can have camera sensors the same size as standalone cameras like the Sony RX100. To get standard 12 megapixel photos from the 50 megapixel sensor, Huawei does a whole bunch of processing magic, including combining data with two other sensors, and performs a bunch of sweeps through multiple frames to stack images on top of one another, enhancing dynamic range, sharpness, and exposure while reducing overall noise. It also claims the phone can account for hand movement better than before as well. An autofocus has been improved, as has night mode in general, in part thanks to that monstrously huge main sensor. The phone's other two main sensors are equally interesting. The B40 Pro has the same 40 megapixel Cine sensor as the Mate 30 Pro, which doubles as the primary video camera, this time with 4K60 support. And a brand new 12 megapixel RYYB sensor for the 5x telephoto lens. There's still image stabilization on board, of course, but it's clear from the very first photo I took that the sensor itself is of considerably higher quality than the one in the P30 Pro. It's worth mentioning there is a super premium version of this phone as well, known as the P40 Pro Plus, and that version swaps out the 5x telephoto for a 10x periscope paired with a 3x optical arrangement, making for a whopping 5 cameras overall. We'll take a closer look at that model in a video in the weeks ahead. So all this stuff is going to be really great when, you know, we can actually go back outside again. But all the photos I've taken so far, I've already managed to glean a few interesting things. Photos taken with the main sensor are more natural than the P30, with far more detail preserved. And like the Galaxy S20 Ultra, the P40 Pro's main sensor is massive, which gives it amazing natural bokeh, but also with a bit of a finicky focus window. Overall though, I'm extremely impressed with the P40 Pro's camera chop so far, and we'll have more to say in our full review. 
Unfortunately though, it's harder to share these photos with friends and family than it would be on another Android phone, because on this phone you can't use Google Photos out of the box. Which brings us to the software. Of course, there's no Google mobile services here, which means you'll get your apps from Huawei's App Gallery or whatever third-party sources you can find. App Gallery has improved considerably over the past nine months, but there honestly are still quite a few gaps. If you're used to Google stuff in particular, then prepare for a bit of an adjustment period. We'll check back later in our full review to see exactly how the app situation shakes out. There are some neat additions to Huawei's EMUI 10.1 software though. A long press of the back gesture now activates the new multitasking setup for splitting the screen or conjuring up a floating windowed version of some apps. It's similar to what you find on an iPad or one of Huawei's own tablets. And in some countries you'll also get Celia, which is Huawei's new virtual assistant to replace the Google Assistant. Other odds and ends? You're still looking at 40 watt supercharging speeds here, the same as the last couple of generations. That's more than fast enough for wired charging, but now these speeds are also available via wireless charging, going beyond the 27 watt wireless charging speeds of the Mate 30. So that's a very quick first look at the Huawei P40 Pro. Slick design, 5G, ridiculous cameras, and no Google, at least for now. We'll be monkeying around with this phone later to see how much Google stuff we can actually restore, as well as how the phone holds up with Huawei services instead. Stay tuned to subscribe so you don't miss that in our full review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.